Hey guys, welcome back to another video, a little update of what's been going on in my off season. So, got the car all torn down in there. I have a lot of stuff sent out, getting refreshed, rebuilt for the next season, like my shocks, my carbs, and a uh, new steering rack that I had to buy. Those should all be coming back within the coming weeks. So kind of on a standstill now. I could go get some sheet metal and start working on the decking of the car. Um, but yeah, we'll show you what's going on. As you can immediately tell, there's still a lot of dirt on this gas tank. We didn't do a good job cleaning it last time, but we got her torn apart, stripped down. I'm gonna start kind of inspecting everything now that I got that part of the decking off the car. Like I said, all my carbs are sent out. I had a new steering rack. Once that one comes back, I might contact them and see if that's repairable. Probably not. All the panels off the car, gonna start cleaning it up more, just cause we ran out of daylight last time and cleaned it. Yeah, not really too much has been going on. Uh, I have that RC track that I'm running on the other side of my property. I'm getting a timing system for that should be in any day now. I have quite a few people interested in getting those little one RC, RC cars. Uh, and I also had a friend of mine uh, send me an older RC car that we might start racing some off-road stuff with because all my crew chief, all my uh, crew hands, that's what they do in their off time now. They're getting into the RC stuff pretty heavy and that's what I used to be in. Pretty heavy as well growing up. Might get that, mess around the off season because the track kind of aligns with the full scale dirt oval track. Their seasons align to where every other, every other weekend one of the tracks is racing. So might do that a little bit to fill in uh, the actual race season. Um, just because I'm trying to run for points this year, I don't really want to venture out too much uh, and uh, just to run the risk of breaking stuff and try to run for you know, point contingency. So that being said, there might be some videos of that, about that stuff coming up here soon. We did get a new nose in. I went with the Dominator nose. This is just a blue one, but let me show you all a little difference here. The new rule, all the late model sanctioning bodies got together. They kind of came up with the rule. It's a four inch maximum rise rule. So this is the Dominator, um, what would that be? Your left nose piece. And this is the MD3 um, nose that everyone and their mom runs. So you can see it's got a pretty, pretty um, rounded edge here, catching that air. And this one's a lot more aggressive. It's kind of got more of a 90 here. Uh, but this this meets the maximum rule here. So they so pretty much lay a flat stock of steel across, and they measure down right here uh, to make sure you're not over four inches. So all this is doing. Uh, the air's oops, kick something over. Uh, the air's rolling across the nose, hitting this side, forcing that left front back down on the ground. So you get maximum traction up there. But this right front piece is a lot fatter than the MD3. So you have a lot more plastic up front. There is no valence. So let me show you guys that. I think they came out with a cover to go over it. But this is all molded, and it gets progressively fatter down there. Uh, unlike the MV3, we have the balance that has to be bolted on. So I do need to get new uh, plastic supports. Or I might get the spring steel, whichever I can find is the cheapest. Uh, this one cracked here, possibly from my trailer, honestly. But we're currently trying to bend, trying to bend this up here. So I got the torsus hammer, the jack, trying to get this bent up a little bit more. So. I might just chop this off here uh, so I can bend this easier and re-weld on. Because um, that just got tweaked down a little bit, maybe when I got underneath someone. So, got that going on. So, I was trying to test fit this nose. Something I've never done before is hanging these noses. And it really wouldn't quite fit in right. Uh, doing the test fit before I get the new ones of these in. So, got a little work going on there. And then hopefully, you know, with me building this new nose, I had a lot of issues with my right front rubbing. So we'll show you what was going on. I wore a hole. This is the second time I've done this. So this, this panel here, I wore a hole through there with my right front tire. That last race at Southern had the same deal. So this new nose, there's also new body rules coming out. I have to really read over uh, about the curvature of these and just making sure I'm completely legal here. Uh, I am gonna build the taller right front just so I have some more clearance. 
because um, we do have a forward arm car. The newer Barry Wrights, the Icons, they are a rear strut car. So this bolt here, I've replaced it. Just about every three race days, I have to replace it because you're pretty much grinding this away. You know, the car is working good, as you can tell. We ain't clean and good, but the car is working good when this is just barely on the dirt. You don't want to dig it in, but you want it down on the ground so you can seal that nose off. So that's pretty much a wear item. On the newer cars, it's a raised right front rail, and this is flipped to the back, so you don't have to worry about that issue. But now that this is digging in the ground, Maybe that was conflicting with some stuff up front. Um, so we'll see. Because I knew the car was a little bit off after uh, we had like a little bit of a front end incident at Tri-County. Maybe. I, I have to go back and watch the GoPro footage. But after, you know, I think it was like our fourth race, I replaced a bunch of stuff on the front end, ball joints, that type of stuff, upper control arms. And I just felt like we were chasing something. So now seeing this bumper... Cause it kind of, the car would get in the corner, it'd bite real good. And then it would just kind of push up the track again. Like what we were chasing the kind of like the first few races before we made some right front changes and it was really good. Um, so maybe something up there might be bent. Might, maybe the bumper was hitting first instead of that bolt. And uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. We do have a new sponsor coming on board this year. Uh, Brian Thompson Roofing, he was my Eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade history teacher. Uh, he sponsors quite a few cars and he owns a late model himself. Uh, they're out of St. Louis. Um, he's coming on board this year. I'm going to put him on the nose because we're not really going to do a new body this year. Sheet metal has gone up to 115. I'm thinking it's going to go up to $130 for one of these sheets here. Just a four by 10 sheet. A whole body. I mean, I alone already need uh, about two... Two sheets on the back, maybe a sheet and a half there. I maybe need about four sheets to do the stuff I'm going to do in the off season. Anyway, so that's four or five hundred bucks. Uh, then you also need about two sheets per side of the car. That's another four sheets. So it gets pretty pricey. Plus a wrap. You know, you pay a lot of money for these cars looking good. And I mean, this one isn't too far gone. I can flatten it out, kind of clean it up the best I can. But we'll see. If we get more sponsors on board, I'll definitely consider redoing a wrap anyways. But I, at least I can bolt it on. I'm going to redo all this back decking here. Here's a pretty piece here. Pretty big piece. You can see if it wasn't torn, I would reuse this stuff. But a lot of this stuff tore when it got wrecked. So I have to redo all the decking. And plus with the new body rules, I need to ensure that it is centered on the car uh more so than what it was but really to me this off season it's just kind of going over the car nut and bolt and everything more than what i normally have um and just kind of figuring out where we stand for next season i don't want to bolt on any used stuff any junk stuff i want to keep this car nice and keep with keep up with the good stuff so i might pull this rear end i'm gonna check the axle tubes um Pull out the axles, make sure those are straight because we did hit the wall with the rear end. Hopefully we didn't bend anything there. Uh, it still rotates freely. I just need to go through it. I kind of want to get a carbon fiber drive shaft, but we'll see uh, how funds pan out through this winter. But I leave for work in about mm, 30 minutes. So I'm going to try to get as much cleaned up in here as I can before we got to head out. Right, guys so today's sunday we're back here working on the car for we have some friends coming over we're going to run some laps with our little mini late models i'm getting work on the big late model done uh, i just ordered the weirds adjustable rear t-bar kit so we're gonna get that built up i have to weld on new tabs i saw i ordered new chassis tabs hopefully i ordered the right ones i mean they're cheap if they're not and i mean i could just Honestly, I could probably make them out of whatever material we have laying around. The Weir's kit's pretty straightforward. It comes with like three um, sticks of square tube that you cut to length, and it's all bolt-on. I don't think there's any welding. 
you could TIG weld if you wanted to, but we don't have a TIG welder. So we're just gonna bolt it all together. Hopefully it turns out all right. I'm gonna use this bent up one as kind of a, a reference for your distance here, straight across. It's gotta be 72 inches, but you gotta do your center section and each, each of your ends there. So got that coming in. Uh, I'm gonna get to work cleaning this guy up. As you can see, she's pretty dirty. Almost forgot my PPE. Works like a charm. So I forgot my simple green in the other shop on the other side of the house. It's a little cold here in Florida. I think it's maybe, I don't know, 60 degrees. It is freezing. Yeah, the track's come a long way since uh, probably the last time y'all seen it. The wall put up, got the stickers on the back. Starting to get some rubber in over here. You can tell kind of from this angle, all right here. We've been getting some laps in. We'll cruise on in here though. This is where my simple green's at. Got the heater on in here. And there it is. We're gonna be running these guys here in a little bit. Might as well get battery charger up and going so we'll go back to work on the big late model if anyone's interested we are fully stocked up in here fellas so i use simple green and spray a little wd-40 on the rag that's what i use to go around wipe down every bar kind of check everything make sure these i might even just go through and replace all zip ties just because that's a that brake line comes undone gets caught up on something we'll be in big issues but going through here cleaning up everything everything we missed from the last cleaning we ran out of the daylight there just going through check all your welds around here make sure nothing's cracked i don't think this car's got pretty low lights on it from what i know from the last time it was completely going through but yep this is this is the joy of dirt racing. Just sit here, wipe your baby down. Make sure she is clean, good to go. Saw my fingers in there. But yeah, so the WD-40 kind of helps lubricate stuff so it don't rust. We'll clean this fuel cell up. I might need to spray some more on there. All right, today is Monday. I got a spoiler in. Hopefully this is the white one. Because I got delivered a red one. Had to send it back, got a white one. So let's crack this guy open. All right, did we get, yes we did. There's the spoiler. Hopefully it ain't messed up. The box looks like it's in good condition. Let me take this out of here, I can't do it. One handed. All right, so we got it out of the box. Here are the side pieces. And this is the middle piece here. It's a little different. This is the uh, dominator. I guess middle middle splitter. I don't know what you want to call this. It's cut down quite a bit. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it does. And if this kind of I feel like the spoiler is causing me to suck, well, I'll just you know grab that guy off of this one, paint it white, slap it on. But I don't know. It's something a little different. You know, maybe bring bring some eyes to the car. Like, man, what is he doing? So you already, we already have a different nose. We're going with the Dominator nose. 
you know, one of the Dominator spoiler. You know, car's gonna look a lot, a lot more different than a traditional late model. But I had a filling fallout uh, about a month ago that I got replaced today. So like, this whole side of my face feels like I had a stroke. I uh, can't really move it. It's hard talking. So I'm gonna cut the video here uh, so I can get some more work done on this guy. Just cleaning and I'm gonna pull the fuel filter, clean that, and I might order a new one just to put in there. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna get going on is just cleaning and tidying up and uh we'll start with another video once we start getting more parts in once we can get this thing back together so i appreciate y'all watching and hanging with me if you like what you're seeing let me know i'll see y'all here in a couple weeks maybe and once we start getting more parts in once we start really piecing this thing back together it'll be more interesting